We're going to talk about something pretty critical for the future of cybersecurity. It's the NIS2 directive or NIS2 directive, which comes into effect on October the 17th, 2024, or it'll already be in effect, depending on when you're watching it. And this is the date by which all EU member states must have integrated NIS2 into their national laws. So welcome, I'm Nathan from Station X, where we help you navigate the complexities of cybersecurity and grow your career with confidence. So now you might be wondering, especially for those based in the US, you know, why do I care about this uh, EU regulation? Well, NIS or NIS2 doesn't just impact EU based companies. If your organization operates in Europe, uh, provides services like, you know, cloud computing to, to companies in Europe, maybe online marketplaces or is part of some global supply chain, European supply chain, the regulations could directly affect you or organizations that you work with or for. So in the UK, organizations are guided by the National Cybersecurity Center, NCSC, uh, their uh, cyber assessment framework, CAF, but are and are not required uh, to be assessed against uh, NIS2. But of course, they could be, as I mentioned, if you have some sort of relationship with Europe. So even for those not directly involved with Europe, NIS2 could influence future regulations uh, like in the US and other regions. So it's important to understand or at least get this little overview here that's coming up. NIS2 significantly expands the original NIS directive, which was in or from 2016, it increases the scope to include not just essential sectors like energy, transport, healthcare, and so on, but also digital services, food production, postal services, and more. This means a much broader range of organizations, including those based outside of the EU, but operating with European entities will need to comply. So the penalties for non-compliance are steep with fines of up to 10 million euros or 2% of global turnover, making it a serious financial and operational risk for businesses globally. The deadline is fast approaching as I record. So organizations need to start preparing now to ensure compliance by October, 2024. For those working in cybersecurity, wanting to work in cybersecurity, NAS2 presents both challenges and opportunities. So let's break down some of the key reasons why it might matter to you. So we can think stricter security requirements are going to come from NIS2. It increases the security standards organizations must meet, requiring more proactive measures to mitigate cyber threats. This creates demand for cybersecurity professionals who can implement these controls and incident response strategies. You can think about supply chain security because another significant change is the emphasis on supply chain security. If you're in a sector that interacts with European businesses, you'll need to ensure that not just your systems, but those of your suppliers are compliant. So this presents opportunities for professionals focused on third party risk management. Also governance and accountability. NIS2 also holds senior management personally accountable for cybersecurity failures. You know, so for those aspiring to leadership roles, understanding this shift in responsibility is key as cybersecurity is now considered a top level uh, business priority. Key elements to know about when it comes to NIS2 is the things that uh, you need to know. Instant reporting. So under NIS2, significant cybersecurity incidents must be reported within 24 hours. That's a pretty tight window that requires well-prepared response teams, PR, all set up and ready to go. So if you're in instant response or you're in management or you're even in PR, this is an area that's going to need increased attention 
and readiness. And really, even organizations that are not requiring to conform to this should be in the game of dealing with incident response. So increased penalties, as I mentioned earlier, the fines can be up to 10 million euros or 2% of global revenue. So that uh, means non-compliance isn't just a security risk. You know, it's a serious financial liability. Cross-border uh, cooperation. So NIST 2 encompasses, or sorry, encourages cross-border collaboration in dealing with large-scale cyber incidents. So this means if you work for an international organization, you'll need to navigate the complexities of working across different regulatory environments and jurisdictions. So key areas to focus on. So I mentioned some of these, but risk management, incident response, supply chain, accountability, and in increased penalties. So what does this mean if you're thinking about your, your role or your career in cybersecurity? You know, so if you're already in cybersecurity or you're wanting to get in cybersecurity, NIST 2 uh, represents an opportunity to specialize potentially in areas uh, such as this or areas such as compliance, uh, risk, um, potentially supply chain security uh, is a big opportunity, of course, incident response. These regulations and increased regulations are coming everywhere. And of course, they will all pretty much require the same sorts of things. So organizations will also need trained professionals, you know, to help meet these new requirements. So there's a growing demand for experts who can manage compliance. At Station X, we do a yearly review of trends within cybersecurity and also how to future-proof your career. And compliance, or rather regulations, are in on the increase, and therefore any role around dealing with regulation is going to be something that would be of interest and would future-proof what it is that you're doing and is going to be coming along and something that you're going to have to deal with as a professional. Obviously, it already exists, but we uh, foresee that there'll be much more need uh, for compliance. So for those looking to enter the field, understanding NAS2 or similar regulations will give you a competitive advantage if you want to be in that particular area. And uh, the need for risk management specialists, compliance officers, and you know, cybersecurity analysts generally is only going to increase as more companies seek to meet stringent demands of NAS2 and others like it. Right, so let's have a think about what you need to do in order to check if an entity is NIS2 compliant. So obviously you will need a structured approach that ensures you meet all of the requirements. So let's do a little breakdown of what you might do if you're thinking of dealing with NAS or your or NIS2 for your organization or for an organization that you're going to work for. So we've got to assess whether the organization's in scope. So, you know, determine whether your organization is classified as essential or an important entity, or if you're dealing with those, uh, those types of entities. NIS2 impact, impacts various sectors, such as healthcare, energy, transportation, finance, digital service services. Each classification has specific compliance requirements. And you want to perform a gap analysis against NIS2 requirements. Uh, which involves comparing your current or the organization's current cybersecurity policies, procedures, tools, cybersecurity controls uh, against the uh, requirements under the, under the directive. So you can think about these sorts of steps. So understand the NIS2 requirements. So you know, review the directive. Be uh, begin by thoroughly understanding the NIS2 uh, key requirements, particularly those related to incident reporting, risk management, supply chain, uh, security and governance. Those key areas to focus on is 
uh, instant response and reporting within 24 hours, risk management for both internal systems and third-party suppliers, uh, senior management accountability, and continuous monitoring and vulnerability management. You can then think about identifying your current practices, your current controls, evaluate your existing systems, you know, list all your current security practices, policies, controls, tools, and uh, personnel involved in cybersecurity. This would be no different from any sort of other compliance. Now, this is earlier days at the moment for this, and there's not much in the way of tools, but simply a spreadsheet which goes through the requirements and whether you meet those requirements would be the most basic of tools. And you would document things like your incident response procedures, your risk management processes, the security tools and applications that you might have in place, you know, your firewall, uh, firewalls, your, your SIEM, your intrusion detection systems, your uh, current vendors and supply chain uh, and, issue, and potential things to do with your supply chain and security checks around it. So you can look at other standards for how they do their compliance checks and how to identify your current practices. And then, of course, you compare the NIS2 uh, requirements, you know, match current practices against the NIS2 standards. For each NIS2 requirement, assess if the organization meets, partially meets, or does not meet the standard. You know, for example, instant reporting. Do you have mechanisms in place to report cybersecurity incidents within 24 hours? You know, Risk management, are you conducting regular risk assessments, including your supply chain? And you identify the gaps. You document the gaps, you know, for each area where your organization doesn't meet NAS2 requirements, document the specific shortcomings. You know, for example, lack of automated incident reporting or insufficient vendor risk management or no senior management involvement in cybersecurity strategy or... Um, inconsistent or out-of-date security policies. And then you've got to create a plan of action. You've got to sort it out. You've got to prioritize the gaps based on risk, based on impact. So rank the gaps by severity and impact on the organization and on compliance. Prioritize those that pose the greatest risk, the greatest impact to the business. You know, for example, failure to report incidents in time or weak supply chain security and set timelines you know for each gap assign timelines for resolution ensuring they align with the nas2 compliance uh, deadline assign resources allocate the necessary resources budget personnel tools uh, to address the identified gaps and then you've got to implement it you know you've got to close the gaps you know this may Involve implementing new technologies, you know, automated monitoring systems, uh, updating instant response plans, or conducting new risk assessments. You've got to do your training and awareness, so you know, ensure all relevant staff, including senior management, are trained and uh, are updated on the policies and the NIS2 uh, compliance requirements. And then you've got to continue to uh, regular review, you know, continuous monitoring. Once the gaps are closed. Regular review, update your policies and systems to maintain compliance, particularly uh, as new threats emerge. And um, ongoing audits, Con conduct regular internal audits to ensure continued alignment with the NIS2 requirements. So that's it. So in conclusion, NIS2, you know, it's going to be a game changer, particularly for Europe, obviously. You know, it's a directive that's going to strengthen Europe's critical infrastructure against cyber attack, but it impact, its impact will go beyond the EU, affecting global businesses and creating uh, new opportunities for cybersecurity professionals. And with the October the 17th, 2024 deadline, it's now that people need to be uh, ready and, and compliant. If you want to take advantage of NIS2 and use it within your career, then just do a search for the standard and get to uh, learning the standard. And if you're looking to uh, start or grow your career in cybersecurity, head over to stationx.net. We have resources 
that can help you uh, fast track your success. And if you've enjoyed today's content, be sure to subscribe so you won't miss out on more tips, insights and strategies. Plus, the more people that subscribe we have, the better content we can create to help you reach your goals faster. So don't miss a thing. Subscribe today. Catch you later.